situations It's hard to see the forest for the trees Just when you think it's time for celebration The unforeseen can drive you to your knees But ups and downs are part of this life's journey A lesson learned, another chance to grow And through the bumps and dips, the twists and turnings One truth remains unchanged, so you can know That you can rise, you can rise above it You can break away your chains It's no surprise, cause when it comes down to it The simple truth remains Listen to the voice inside your being Just see yourself through your Creator's eyes You are God's perfect child, the Christ revealing Remember who you are and realize That you can rise, you can rise above it You can break away the chains It's no surprise, cause when it comes down to it, the simple truth remains. The very hairs upon your head are numbered. Every breath you take is a miracle If the rocks could speak they'd shout with joy and wonder Look up and you will see Claim your divinity and you will rise You will rise above it You will break away your chains It's no surprise Cause when it comes down to it The simple truth remains Father knows the flight of every sparrow Your Father knows your needs each night and day Unchanging yesterday, today, tomorrow When you listen you will hear Him say Go on and rise, you can rise above it You can break away your chains It's no surprise, cause when it comes down to the simple truth remains Just listen to the voice inside your being Just see yourself through your Creator's eyes and That's important, I was uh... I gave a talk uh, back in January called The Power of Silence. And it's on YouTube, of course. And um, I was doing a search for something and that on YouTube and that talk popped up. And uh, this morning there were 2,099 views on it, which is very unusual for, um, usually we'll have anywhere from 50 to 80 views per, per talk, but that one's been up for, for a while. so. I don't know what that's about. It's in some kind of a stream of some kind that got picked up by a group or something, but um, it tells me, I mean, we we kind of look for these things, you know, what are people responding to? And of all things, uh, that particular talk would not have gotten my attention as one that was popular because we're not a real silent society. We're pretty uh, boisterous. And it's difficult to be still, but I think more people are starting to understand the importance of that. Uh, this idea, be still and know that I am God. You know, that's, uh, that's a statement that is absolutely true. And um, we look for God in all kinds of places and all kinds of things, but it's important to pull ourselves back, you know, into this 
now moment and to find that center of power in us. And that's what uh, I was responding to when I opened up Lessons in Truth again, Emily, Emily Cady's book, Lessons in Truth. Because this statement has always meant a lot to me. She says, each man, and of course she wrote back in the 1800s, so we would say each person today, must sooner or later learn to stand alone with his God. Nothing else avails. Nothing else will ever make you master of your own destiny. And that, uh, the first time I read that, you know, when I was 16 years old, it, it jumped out at me. It was uh, just, for some reason that resonated because I, I guess I was trying to stand alone with someone else's God, with someone else's idea. And, you know, coming out of the, the mainstream Christian movement, that's sort of what you're taught. You know, you are presented with ideas of how you should best approach God, how you should think of God, the role that, that Jesus plays and, and uh, all of that. And, uh, you know, all that provides something at some level. But then when you, when you think of uh, standing alone with your God, and that's kind of what Jesus said, you know, that, I mean, he was quoting uh, one of the commandments, but learn to love the Lord your God. He didn't say, love the Lord my God. He said, love the Lord your God. With all your mind, heart, and soul. It's the same kind of idea. It's uh, learn to stand alone with your God. And that means like any time your life looks like it's going in a direction you don't get, you don't understand, that that's when it is most important. That you get back to this idea, what does that mean? What does that mean in this situation? To stand alone with my God. You know, you may be saying, well, I feel very much alone right now in this situation. And it doesn't feel like there's any God around. You know, it doesn't feel like there's any uh, help here. And so she's obviously referring to something a little deeper than where we usually are when we're afraid, which makes perfect sense, you know, because when we're afraid, we're at the surface. We're at the surface of our mind. We're at the surface of our, uh, you know, we're judging by appearances. And so we're saying, my world is falling apart, or my world is changing, or I'm in a situation that's bigger than I am, and I can't, I don't have the resources to deal with it. So where does that idea of standing alone with your God come in in a time like that? That's the question that we all would ask ourselves, or need to ask ourselves. How can I make this a practical help? How can it get me through this? How can it help me get through this particular situation? Because we always want things to go a certain way. You know, in our mind, we have it mapped out. Here's how it has to go for me to be okay, for me to be happy, for me to be satisfied, for me to feel like I have accomplished something. But what about those times when it doesn't do that? And it's probably about 50% of the time that it doesn't do that. It's so often it doesn't go as we as we anticipate. Life doesn't go as we anticipate. But she says, if you don't learn to stand alone with your God, that uh, nothing beyond that will make you the master of your own destiny. And so that's a pretty good combination of, of thought. And it's kind of what I was saying this morning, you know, or earlier uh, this morning is if you're not in charge of your, your mind, who is and what is, is not being in charge of your mind, is not that our destiny, when you think about it? Were we put here on this planet, did we come here, I shouldn't say or were we put here, because I think we came here, to be blown around by the winds of appearance, by the winds of change? Is that our purpose, just to learn how to survive in inclement weather, social changes, challenges, physical, whatever kinds of things that I'm confronted? Is that my job, is just to come here and try to figure out all the problems? 
that I'm confronted with or am I here to to take control of my life to the point where this experience becomes a meaningful one does life have meaning or do I bring meaning to it you know that's the it is a cup half full or half empty and I don't think there's the life itself has a lot of meaning I think we are the ones that must bring meaning to it and you can't bring meaning to it if you bring meaning to it and something knocks it off and I think that's what Katie's saying you know that you've got to learn to stand alone with your God is your God angry because your life's not going right is your God uh, weak is your God uncertain is your God biting his fingernails <laughs> Might be a, might be time to trade that one in if he is. So, what she's saying is, you know, let's get to the ground of our being, as Paul Tillich called it. Let's get to the ground of our being, that part of us that does not change, and that part of us that, when change does occur, we're not moved by it. And we all are. I mean, that's what I was saying earlier. Also, that this is the challenge that we're in in this whole spiritual path if a day is not good or bad it just is and it depends on me to make it good or bad then that's a pretty big responsibility because that means I ought to be conscious every moment of that day in order to decide what kind of day I want it to be and if I let things begin to suck me down into some dark abyss then I also have the power to bring myself back out but it's not just a mind thing it's not just a brain thing there is a thing in yourself there's a level of experience that you can have where you know without a doubt that everything's okay that's your God center. That's your center of power. Your God self. And so it's, uh, th that's why, you know, we talk about the power of silence. Or learn to stand alone with God is find that center of power in yourself. If even for a moment. Where you can say, you know, there's a, there's something more. I have access to something more than this, this appearance. It's not being irresponsible. Because as I say so often, you know, you function much better when you're coming from a place of power. And by that I don't mean a place of ego. I mean a place of self-assurance. A, self uh, a place of high self-esteem. And that is a connection with your God self. You function much better, you relate to people much better when you're coming from a place of strength rather than from a place of weakness. And I've asked that question many times. Are we trying to support a weakness or are we expressing a strength? You know, that's, to me, a question that's always on the table. When I look at some negative reaction I'm having to, to a situation, I'm reacting because I'm supporting a weakness in myself. I'm having a negative reaction because I'm saying this thing looks larger than me. So in order for me to feel better, I've got to get rid of that thing. I've got to change it. I want to support this weakness. I don't want to get rid of the weakness. I want to keep on, keep hanging on to that, but I want to get rid of the thing that pushes that particular button. So you come to realize at some point in your life, I think this is what she's saying that you're never going to get rid of that button. You're never going to get rid of that thing that's upsetting you. There's always going to be something more to come that will take you beyond, that will take you beyond the realm of your strength, what you think is your strength, what you perceive as your strength. And you react in weakness, so you attack the situation. So you can get rid of that, so that weakness will be protected. And we all do it. It's not... It's just an observation. It's not a. It's not a judgment. We all do this. You know, when you are fearful, 
It's coming out of weakness. That fears come, all fears born out of weakness. I'm inadequate about something. There's something lacking in me. And so if I'm afraid, I want to get rid of that thing that's scaring me. And if we're attacking it only from the outside, we haven't learned to stand alone with our God. And the, the real measure of this is when something is totally got you, something totally has got your attention in a negative way. And yet you're able to, to sit down and say, okay, I'm here, I'm scared to death. But somebody said there's something in me that's greater than that which is in the world. If that's true, I want to find that. I want to bring that into play right now when I need it most. This is my life. This is my experience. And I wasn't given a spirit of fear, I'm told. So where did it come from? What is this? And we retain the spirit of fear because we're protecting it. We find ways to protect it. And we've, those ways always have to do with dealing with changing some condition outside of ourselves. But I have said, again, many times that um, I can guarantee your life is not on the outside going to get that much better. And by that I mean, yes, it'll get better. But you're always going to have challenges. Those are always going to happen. What gets better is how we respond to them. Because everything's pretty much okay the way it is. It's just our response. That's what determines the quality of our experience, the quality of our life. And again, that's a big responsibility. And a lot of people don't want it. They want the government to bail them out. Or they want some something or someone else to step in. And sometimes that's necessary. You know, we don't want to overlook that either. Sometimes we all need help of some kind. I think when you're feeling down and you just pick up the phone and call somebody and talk to them. I was doing this just the other day. Somebody called. They were very depressed. And by the time our conversation was over, they were no longer depressed. And it's not that I have a magic wand of any kind. It's just that sometimes you reach out and you talk to somebody. And that conversation puts you in another place. It gets you past your weakness. So you stop sitting there feeling sorry for yourself, protecting that weakness. And maybe somebody else can give you a broader perspective. And I've done that with other people as well, where I was not feeling so well, talk to someone. There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we need help. We need to get out of our, uh, our little bubble, self-interest. But it's, that's like the training wheels. You know, we don't want to stay there all the time. I've shared the story about the little boy I saw drive, fly by on his bicycle. He had training wheels on the back, but neither one were touching the ground. You know, it's a psychological thing. I've got them on there. I'm safe. <laughs> I, I never have forgotten that. It's a simple, simple lesson. There's lessons every place. So Katie's reminding us that our spiritual path to freedom is never blocked by some daunting appearance. And it sure seems like it is. Sometimes it seems like it is. Apparent obstacles are a call to take a stand to turn from peace-robbing appearances and realign with our God-given courage and strength. Our destiny is freedom. To become masters of our destiny, we must first become masters of our own fear. You know, when you're in a state like that, when you're, when you're, having a, a, you're in a, a reactive state of fear, and somebody says, well, we need to pray about it, you know, that can have kind of an annoying... Uh, you can have a, an annoyed reaction to that. Because <laughs> you say, we don't need prayer, we need a rifle, you know. <laughs> we, need, we, need a, we need force of some kind, we need to get rid of this thing. But often what they're saying, the people that tend to say that is, you know, we need to get God to help us intervene. If I would say that, and I never do say that, because I know how people react to it. I would say it in a different way. We need to get back to our center of power. Yes, this thing is there, and yes, it is disturbing. 
So are we going to let it walk all over us? Or are we going to pull ourselves back into that place where we are centered in our power? And then we take a deep breath from that place and we look back out there and it doesn't look so bad. Because when you get down to a certain level, you know, you can only see a certain thing. It's like being up next to a mountain, you know, and, and seeing the side of the mountain. But if you climb that mountain and get up on top of it, you see the whole world. And that's what we want to do. That's what this is about. It's, that's, your, that's your true vision. You know, that's the, the looking at your life from a high perspective. That's what we want. And that's really what prayer is. Prayer is a process of letting go of the appearance and affirming the truth of who you are. Standing alone with your God, it's making that decision. There's a letting go. It's climbing a ladder, you know, to, to, to go up the next step, you have to let go of the one you're on. It's not negative. That's how you climb. And so we look out at our situation and we're just, you know, we're, we're locked on that ladder. And we, we're afraid. Have you ever been in, on a, in a height someplace so you're so high and scared to death that you can't move? <laughs> Or climbing a tree. I remember climbing a tree when I was a kid. And I, something happens, you just become terrorized. You know, you freeze. Three feet off the ground. You know, you. <laughs> I don't know why that happens. It's a self-preservation thing, I guess. But um, that's, it's a natural reaction, but we've carried that into an unnatural level of looking at all of life. Uh, that's a physical preservation, and that's you know part of what that's all about. Any animal will display that same type of behavior. But what we do is we have this mind that is so creative that something happens, we can start imagining even more things. We can add things to that thing. We can <laughs> compound it into something that's not even recognizable. And that's why it sometimes is helpful somebody comes and they just blow that picture right up, you know, and, it, and we say, well, it doesn't, it's not, not looking so bad after all. But we want to know that, you know, that, okay, the training wheels are there, but we don't need them. That's learning to stand alone with our God. So apparent obstacles are a call to take a stand and to turn from the peace-robbing appearances, relying our, uh, with our God-given courage and strength. So you have a problem in your life, something that's disturbing you. That's, it's like a signal. It's like an oil light that comes on in your car. It's a signal to go check your oil, you know, to put oil in. <laughs> I just remember my, one of my cousins um, passed away, but she said she was afraid to check her oil because it might be empty. <laughs> okay. To stand alone with our, <laughs> to stand alone with our God, is to find our center of power and to reach the unshakable conviction that the highest good is now unfolding through our life. Okay, that's that's important because you're you're looking at this thing and you're defining your life by this negative appearance, and by that I mean, my life is really bad right now because of this thing going on. But when we let go of that, and it's not that we're, you know, we're trying to change the situation, but you're letting go of the, what it's doing to you, letting go of that energy, your, the reaction that you're having to that. It's like you can, you can take a deep breath. You can know again that, yeah, this too shall pass. This is not so bad. I've been here before. That's a funny thing, you know, when you're having a problem, it seems like it's, that's the worst thing that's ever happened <laughs> in your whole life. And how many times do we say that? We say it every time it, something pops up. If we can just remember that we made it through those, all those, you know, we're here, we've made it here, and that whatever is here will someday be behind us in the rearview mirror. So our life is unfolding in divine order, that it is, it's okay. 
And that's part of learning to stand alone with your God. It's, the, it's rising above the appearance saying, I don't have the power or the ability to handle this situation. But something in me does, and I want to connect with that. And it's never gone. It's always there. You can do it any time you want. And one of the uh, statements that she recommends are very simple. God is my defense and my deliverance. God is my defense and deliverance. Uh, back in uh, her, her life, her father was uh, exiled from the United States, Emily Cady's father. And I don't know what the circumstances were. She talks about it in one of her books. But he was exiled, and uh, out of some very nasty things that were being said about him or whatever, I, I don't, well, I don't know if it was exiled out of this country. He was exiled out of somewhere, wherever he was from. But anyway, she said that they hired lawyers and they did all kinds of things for many years to try to get that resolved, and they just never could. And finally, she just said, I, she just started saying, God is my defense and deliverance. And God is your defense and deliverance, speaking of her father. And she said within like a month or so, it was the whole situation was resolved. But when you think about this, you know, you're going through something, you don't, don't know how to handle it. And you say, God is my defense and deliverance. That's my protection and my answer. You don't have to understand how that's going to work. But just call upon that power in yourself because when you do, the door in your own being begins to open. That is the door of conscious. You're, you become conscious of that power. God is my defense and deliverance. I would recommend that you memorize this. It's on the back of the program. It's a very simple line, but I've been using that. In fact, let's use it right now together. God is my defense and deliverance. Again, God is my defense and deliverance. And just to say that something moves in you if you let it, if you let yourself tap into this. My defense, it's my protection from whatever it is I'm looking at. And my deliverance, the answer, it's going to pull me out, pull me through this thing. It's a very powerful statement, simple as it is. And most of these things are. That statement from Jesus to the storm, peace be still. You can't get much simpler than that. That's three words. There's one that's simpler even. I am. And if you can uh, tap into that one, that's a very powerful phrase to use, I am. Because it pulls you in from the future and the past. I am now. I am. And that's getting in touch with your God. So speak these words quietly until you feel God is my defense and deliverance. Speak these words quietly until you feel the shackles of fear fall away. Anytime throughout your day the darkness of fear attempts to overtake you, speak them again until you know you're standing alone with your God. Your destiny is freedom, and your freedom is now. Okay? Very simple idea. I'm sure every one of us has something going on in our life that we would like to see, like to prevail over. And so this is just a simple technique that we can apply. All right? Thanks for coming out. Be safe. Just know your life is in divine order. Thanks. You've been watching a talk presented by Reverend Doug Bottorf at Independent Unity here in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado. We would like to thank everyone who joined us here today, as well as those of you who joined us online. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to share it with those you think who might benefit from this message. If this brought value to your life, please consider donating to us on PayPal. Thanks again for watching. <laughs>